to, tonight in Italy and today in Canada. She's directly from Italy. Is the soprano Capucine Chiaudani. By the way, Capucine. I'm Donna. Capucine? It's a French name. Ah, it's Capucine. The French name. Yes, ah. Italian cannot speak it uh, correctly, so I'm used. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, cool. So Capucine Chiaudani. So a soprano from Italy, you saw it just there. Uh, she, she's ready to talk to us about uh, her career, her technique, and uh, you know uh, all these kind of, of things. Um, I'm Adrian. I'm Adrian for La Fiscella Musicale. Uh, en français pour le monde uh, uh, francophone. Bonjour tout le monde. Bienvenue ce matin à notre émission de la chaîne à tête à tête. Allô, Je suis allô. Ah. Allô, allô. <laughs> allô, allô. <laughs> voilà, c'était Capuccini, uh, Capucine Chiaudani, uh, soprano italienne, de, um, qui vient nous rejoindre aujourd'hui pour discuter de, de chant. Uh, elle enseigne surtout en ce moment, puis elle a eu une carrière pas mal importante en Europe pendant, pendant des années. Alors, uh, alors voilà, on, on aura cette discussion aujourd'hui. J'entends un peu d'écho, je ne sais pas si... Uh, si l'audio est correct. Maybe it's a bit of noise here. Okay, maybe better. Donc, uh, um, so uh, yes, we, we'll start right away. Uh, before starting, I, I would like you to um, to know uh, all the, the the socials for Capucine. Uh, Capucine. <laughs> it's uh, you have the bel canto for you. You, you uh, for those in the chat, um, I'm pretty sure you can see it there right now. The links. Also, I invite you to visit myshena.org. Uh, that's what I work. And uh, you have a lot of articles related to music, to opera, to uh, jazz, to uh, orchestras. Um, so that the link there is www.myshena.org. I also invite you to, f uh, to subscribe to the podcast of this program. Um, it's, on, it's available on iTunes. It's available on Spotify etc. Uh, for the people who like more the audio way of um, of doing, I I prefer myself podcast. Uh, uh, I like it more. It's more like I don't know. There's there's something special to just hearing and imagining the people. So um, without uh, another thing, if you have any questions for for uh, uh, Capucin, uh, please write in the chat uh, in the chat there of La, Ch uh, La Cena Musicale or Don Adriano. I can see your questions, and if I think it's relevant, I'll ask to, to, to Capucine if she wants to answer some of them. If you have questions for me, I'll try that too. But I mean, today is really about Capucine. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's go with Capucine Caudani directly from Italy. Hello. Genova, <laughs> from the city of Paganini. The city of, the Pag city of Columbus. Here, yeah. here I am. Yes. How how are you this morning? Well, this morning for uh, for Canada this <laughs> afternoon. Afternoon here it's five o'clock uh, in the afternoon. Uh, very very hot, <laughs> forty degrees Celsius. Oh my goodness! Yes, yeah, summer, but also blue sky, also nice. That's okay. Great. And well, fine. Um, and uh, listen, uh, you you've been uh, very busy. Uh, finally, did, did, uh, was it a busy day already today? You. Well, I had some uh, few uh, <laughs> students online from the other side of the ocean, from Florida, <laughs> for example, and uh, yes, uh, from USA. Well, yes, I, I was already busy, yes, <laughs> while you were sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I slept really bad, I have to tell you, because my neighbors, they have a balcony that is, it goes directly, all they do all they say and everything I can hear clearly from my window because their balcony is besides my window. So I'm kind of uh, going crazy, <laughs> kind of drinking my third coffee in uh, one hour, you know. <laughs> so um, excuse me if I have any memory slip or anything like that. Um, and and yesterday, talking about busy, yesterday you, uh, I understand you had a, you launched your, your first what? webinar, is, what, is that right? No, no, it's not my first. Uh, actually, uh -uh. It's, it's my third. Uh, my third. Oh <laughs> my God. Okay. No, because I la for uh, last week I had uh, a webinar for about um, well breath support about <laughs> clearing a bit of confusions and a bit of uh, misconceptions about this so important topic. There is so much confusion out there. So. Um, 
while I was also not uh, better than others, I, when I was uh, a bit younger, I had to struggle also a lot with this kind of confusion. So for me, it was uh, important to go straight to the point. <laughs> and my, in my private uh, musical group, uh, Belcanto for You, I asked a bit to the members, yes, what is the topic that, uh, yes, uh, <laughs> you would like to focus on and which worries most and 99.9% .9 answered <laughs> the brand support so that was very easy and one week ago I, I spoke about that and it was interesting uh, it was a sort of lecture and then also a middle part of practical work and then questions but at the end uh, and it was three hours webinar so it was not three minutes but at the end uh, what the feedback was can you give us, please, more uh, clear, easy uh, maneuvers and examples? Yeah. How to do that? <laughs> so I understand, okay, uh, they understand it here, but they don't feel it there in the body. So yesterday I did uh, a workshop. Yes, it was very practical with a short introduction and a short summary again, and into words in a sort of um, espresso coffee <laughs> cup and then straight to the work and we worked uh, yes more than one hour with seven uh one and a half hour with seven participants really okay. on very very simple elementary clear maneuvers to feel it to find it to understand what what what, what is it about <laughs> great so that was yesterday yes all right and very and the period and when is the next one and how can people oh. participate in well, this? Well, next one is... I want to uh, participate. Uh, next <laughs> one is next week, but I will be in present and this is not online. I will be uh, one week in Germany at okay. the Open Academy uh, Schloss Helfenfeld. Helfenfeld is near uh, Nuremberg, not far from Munich, and with uh, the beautiful pianist Dennett uh, Witter, who is American. We will uh, have one week course in presence. Woo! We are very happy about that. We were a bit unsure for this uh, special situation of the COVID. Yeah. But at the end, yes, we will do that. So this is my next project. And after that, I will see to do something again online, I think, yes. Okay, okay. Okay, so okay. Keep, keep me posted about that one. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Are, 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 are your webinars available after you do them or on... on, on well, on... the thing is, I didn't think about it, but I had so many requests about participants. Can we, receive, can we see it again? Is there a replay? Yes or no? So I managed to organize it and I'm managing to organizing this. So there is a lot of work goes afterwards. <laughs> yeah. But some are already online, yes. Uh, the first two webinars... Uh, uh, about uh, athletes of the voice and also uh, is, is, is coming soon online and for sure uh, online there is uh, the one about the breath support you can find it uh, and uh, see the replay so if you want uh, to know more all the links and the informations are inside of my musical group uh, Belcanto for you you are welcome it's just a group of um, musicians mostly singers even very important singers actually there are really? <laughs> few really <laughs> wow i'm very honored and 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 we just share this common passion nothing more nothing less so and i keep them po posted and informed of what's going on <laughs> great well yeah. listen i i um i wanted to um maybe well after this uh, start with uh, a little bit if you could take us with with you through the journey of how you became a, the singer capucin like how you started and and then and then what were what were the steps the important steps in 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 your career towards uh, being a professional singer and after now when uh, you're deciding more to teach could you uh, maybe trace a, a, a schema or, itinerary <laughs> yeah exactly yeah well, um, I was always very musical from child uh, on, so I, I was the one, the, well, in five minutes, if you would give me an instrument in, in the hand, I would immediately in five minutes play it. Like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so it was something uh, very natural and very, very, um, yeah, a second nature. I must say uh, that because you asked me what uh, brought you to this, I was seven years old. 
And I had a fantastic teacher. Sometimes we have teachers in our life who make a difference and who really make a difference and who really um, bring us to be the person who we will become as adults. And this uh, happened to me in the ground school. I had a teacher who was himself, so he, he was teaching us mathematics and languages oh. and etc. But, but he was a tenor. Oh. And he was a musician and he had a beautiful voice. And every morning we started school singing. He had a guitar. In the wow, that's and this so was cool. the, the, the start of the day. We never, we never started at school huh, without singing. He played even the guitar and he had this wonderful voice. And this really brought me in paradise. I was <laughs> so taken. And one day he, I was seven, he brought the Prokofiev uh, Peter and the Wolf. And he showed us this uh, wonderful uh, masterpiece to teach us the different instruments of the orchestra. And I know, I know, because it is clear for me, like as if it would uh, happen yesterday, that I thought, oh my God, what a joy, this music. I was in <laughs> France, I was really such in a such completely different uh, level. And I remember that I said to myself, I will be a musician. I don't want to do anything else. At seven? No. Yes. You know when ch children say, I will be a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a, I will a fire be <laughs> a baker. <laughs> I will be a postman. And I said, I will be a musician. And that was the moment. And I love this uh, teacher and bring him in my heart forever because uh, he was one uh, who um, created my destiny. I'm sure about this. He was also the first who discovered my voice. I was in the choir of the school and he always put me in the front, always put me in the front. I never asked that, but then I understood why me and why always me. Mm. And why is it so easy to think that for others happen um, with more effort? So I understood, is it that I'm more talented? And so this consciousness came slowly in my head and um, so this is a bit what uh, happened to me yeah slowly slowly step by step and i started actually singing in operas as a child in my oh. native town genova i suggest to every parent to do that it is uh, um, an experience which has no price for a child to be uh, Sometimes there are opera houses uh, which need children for... Oh, yeah, uh, that's uh, it's an easy thing to do. Uh, yes, I mean, yeah. if a child is a musical, why not? And they make a little audition and then you can sing in the um, little choir for Bohème, for Carmen, for Tosca. There are many operas, eh? Werther. And uh, it's a really an experience that changes your life, that opens your mind. So I started like that. Yeah, wow. So that was a bit my path and uh, playing different instruments, of course, <laughs> until I had to choose. Somehow you can't uh, do everything. Eh? And I thought, well, it may be uh, the voice. It, it was always with me since uh, childhood. And so um, at a certain age, I started to, to study seriously at the conservatory in Italy at that time. Uh, today, um, there were conservatories. Now it's at the university level. And uh, so I, I started and um, I started my career as a professional um, choir singer. Okay. Yeah. I was in the choir of the Arena of Verona. Uh, okay. Uh, like choir oh. opera singer. Yeah, the yeah, big yeah. arena of Verona mm -hmm. has, of course, uh, its own orchestra and its own choir and its own ballet. I was a really member of the staff. I was also, before the big fire, I uh, knew the the, the real uh, old uh, Teatro La Fenice. Oh, wow. I worked there, yes. I'm a, a bit older than you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was also in Bologna, Teatro Comunale, and these were fantastic years because uh, when you work uh, at a high level with bravi maestri, good maestros yeah. of choir, and uh, of course we, we made fantastic productions, you really learn a lot. And from there, uh, the step was then to try the solist career. I went uh, to Zurich at the Opera, Opera Studio Zurich. 
Really and cool. from there, slowly, slowly, things started to, to move. People started to, to watch, to, to, to recognize me, to invite me. And of course, uh, all of the itinerary of the audition started to go here and there, traveling for uh, yeah, finding agents and uh, possibilities to be heard. And uh, especially, I, I started, to be honest, in Italy, but because I speak German very well, I, ah, okay. Yes, I made a German school in Genova, and so I grew up with two languages, uh, bilingual, and uh, everyone told me, well, the, the real market is in Germany, and it was true, still nowadays it's like this, uh, there are almost 100 theatres in Italy, almost 10, something like that, this is the proportion, yeah. I, speaking so well German, I, I went there, and I had a... Um, quite an important career with big roles, of course, primary mm. roles. And uh, this is the story. <laughs> and then uh, at what point you decided to, uh, to um, because I understand today you're not, you're not active anymore as a singer, you're really t into teaching, is, is that yes. right? Yes, oh. well, uh, at the moment I'm more uh, focused on that, yes. Yeah. Well, there were some few things, sometime life jumps in. <laughs> and change your plans mm. and this is what happened to me unexpectedly I was actually in the middle of my career and singing also uh, important things and well uh, I had some some surprises let's say uh, I had to go through very heavy chemotherapies oh my and, God, okay. and make a really stop and that had also a, a big impact on my voice of course. yeah 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 mm -hmm. Wow. So um, I had, uh, well, <laughs> to focus on something else. Yes. I'm still here, so it was not my time. But of course, you know, it's, it's a tough uh, wor uh, world. When you go out, it's, it's like Olympia Games level. <laughs> and either you play and either you run or either you're out. And to get in again, it's quite difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very competitive world, of course. Others come <laughs> and take your place. Mm. So it was not easy. Actually, I, I managed to go back on stage. Okay. To, to start all over again, the whole itinerary. <laughs> but it was whew, <laughs> tough. Of... And uh, so at a certain moment, uh, I focused more on teaching because uh, this experience actually taught me a lot. Mm. Because uh, through this uh, very strong therapies, I lost completely my voice. Completely? Yes, I had two notes, F and G. F and G in the middle. And that's it. Wow. After and, that, I thanked Oscar. <laughs> when? It, but, but... Don Giovanni, because even to, uh, after, after that. <laughs> So from very high to very low, it was really not so, uh, an easy is, obstacle. <laughs> so you this you you but but you got back. So is there no, something? I, I learned to rebuild a voice. Yeah. Craft. How how was that? Well, That's with it. a lot of passion and a lot of patience, and this taught me that uh, wonders are possible. This taught me how to help others. Yeah. This taught me how our body functions. This taught me immensely a lot and today i am a very humble person to be honest just to be clear eh? <laughs> if there is an anti-diva that's me I'm, I'm absolutely not that kind of person but many persons tell me and this is the honest truth uh, you're so clear you're so direct and it's so easy to understand you're understandable yeah. <laughs> and i'm so happy to hear that it's the best compliment because this is really what i aim for when I was younger, I struggled. I struggled really to understand. It was not an easy path. It was like very confusing and uh, a lot of time, a lot of money traveling through the world, looking for the perfect teacher with the perfect answers <laughs> and the time consuming, energy consuming, dream consuming. At a certain moment you think, well, there will be never an answer somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and and you lose hope and and I I didn't want uh, this for the younger generation so for me it's really important to give hope but especially you give um, clarity mm. so I try I try to be as clear as clear as possible in my teaching.
Yeah. Well, yeah. well, that's that's well, that's that's clear to me at least in the in the videos I've I've um, watched. Like I was telling you before, uh, yesterday I went on a on a how you call it, on a binge on a on a capucin uh, videos binge. <laughs> so I kind of work. I uh, watched uh, over five hours, I think, and. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think it, it was really clear. Hero, you are a hero. <laughs> I know uh, it was. It was really. Uh, I'm a geek about uh, voice technique, and I, I really want to to understand what the great singers uh, do. And and I mean, it was uh, it wasn't like an effort or anything. So and the thing that came to me, I guess I had some questions about that. Uh, is um, I liked a lot how you explain support. So I guess for I'm gonna ask you for maybe the tenth or twelfth times in in the in the week <laughs> to uh, to ex to explain the 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 auditors and the, I'm pretty sure there's uh, many singers that are watching this. Um, what is support to you and and how a singer supports the voice? Well, <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's start to make it very. <laughs> Super <laughs> cup of espresso coffee because otherwise we need three hours. At yeah, least. I, I understand that. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, support uh, is the, the, the word says, huh? Mm -hmm. Support. I support this, right? I sustain this, okay? I carry it, yes? So what do we sustain? What do we carry? What do we help? Yeah? Our instrument, our voice, our larynx, the work, yeah? So how do we do it? Mm -hmm. So this word, uh, breath support, <laughs> how it is uh, um, constructed, this definition creates <laughs> a lot of confusion because a person thinks, okay, support is this, breath is that, <sighs> I need to make <sighs> to sing better, clear? This is what people think and even professionals and, and it's not about that. So the definition itself creates confusions. Actually, maybe the most better, <laughs> clearer definition could be breath uh, control, mm. breath management, because it's not about pushing breath. No, if we want to say it in one word, it's about resistance, resistance. So resisting breath, resisting breath and not <sighs> pushing breath. Um, and uh, a, a question about that resisting I'm just guessing here and I'm just provoking a little bit the conversation but <laughs> resisting means that naturally uh, a lot of uh, voice students or even professionals we want to uh, push the breath by nature like we think that we're gonna get the note easier if you just push the breath instead of like it's it's an unnatural movement in a way is it <laughs> so um yes and no okay. <laughs> i will explain it better because uh, we have to understand it here uh, first of all and then in the body yes okay mm -hmm. we need breath of course to survive first of all <laughs> uh to speak and to sing and because in classical singing uh we get the different. The main difference is about the length, no? Uh, to 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 be able to make long notes, long phrases. Huh? Of course, we need more breath. This is without saying. This is obvious. This is clear. But this is clear also. Do we also always, 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 always need 120 <laughs> percent of our breath capacity? Is it true? I mean, for make a vocalize. Do we need to do this as if we would start to that's sing what more No. That's what most do. The, the point is that, you know, uh, as classical <laughs> singers or opera singers, uh, we think, okay, this is serious. <laughs> <laughs> this is serious now, huh? Okay? So, come on, let's be serious. <laughs> Wow, and let's go. And this is 120% of my lung capacity. It's too much. So we have to mm. understand that we have to regulate it. Uh, if we make two notes, or if I make five notes, or if I, or if I make a long cadenza, it has to be different, differently mm. distributed. Yes. So 
the question is not how much breath we need, but how little breath we need. Huh. Hmm. Why? Because I will I will go straight to the point. I, mm. If we take a lot of air, we can uh, immediately make this little experiment together online. Now, live with me. Okay. Super easy. Five seconds. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we start immediately with practical exercises. So you take a nice breath, really. Now I sing Daida. Ah, and then you close the vocal folds. <laughs> but explode. It's like, oh my god, oh my god. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. Yeah. And you feel all these molecules of air, like little halligans, coming here against uh, your vocal folds, which function like a valve, which function like a door. These little molecules of halligans air, whoa, really like a tempest, really making pressure. And you are there and trying to do the best of the best of what you can. And you have a lot of worries. Where is the conductor? I don't see him. I don't see him. Where is uh, my handset <laughs> and, and, and the text? And, that. and you have still to fight this tsunami of air coming. Yeah. It's not possible. It's such a stress. You know, the most people who have nodules, Adams, breaks, problems, breathy sounds, yeah. are not because they breathe too little, um, um, because they have a, less, a lack of air, but because they have actually an excess, too much, too much. And this fight, this fight is so, so, so tiring and not healthy, actually mm. dangerous. So what happens if we now make another experiment of, of five seconds and we breathe a bit more <laughs> normally? Calmly, <laughs> huh? what happens? And we close the vocal folds so that we feel it, not just understand it in the brain, but we feel it. Yeah, okay. I was trying to. <laughs> and, we, and we close the vocal folds, okay? So. <laughs> you can hold it you don't have to fight you don't have a tsunami of uh, molecules of air pressing and pushing okay, okay. And question about that trouble. i feel like like i have to push something inside myself to to be able to hold it yeah yeah oh, wait we, we, we're coming okay. there we're coming there you're a bit too fast so this was okay. just we, we're coming yes. there i will answer to your question in a moment so this was just to explain or to make you feel otherwise these are words you have to feel it to understand something you have to say oh yes it's true i feel it then it's true the difference about too much air or a normal quantity of air what happens when we mm, breathe too much it seems crazy but it's not it's like it's a physical thing if you breathe too much air, this air, at the moment of the exhalation, uh, will increase in speed. It mm. goes faster also away. Like when you feel a balloon. Yeah. And then again. And then it's not enough. Again. And you're not <laughs> satisfied. And again. And again. When you let it go, mm. it's gone. In a split of a second on a tree. You don't see it. It's gone. It becomes like a space shuttle. Mm -hmm. So the speed of exhalation increases. If you take the same balloon and you make it just like that, a bit less normal. Mm. Okay. So this is what I mean with excess of pressure. It can be dangerous. Of course, I'm not saying that we don't have to breathe. I don't say this. I say we have to breathe enough point. Enough. Short sentence, short breath. <laughs> short vocalize, short breath, please. Long cadenza, other story. But usually, uh, it's a bit a complex. We have made about with this thing of uh, the breath is sort of monster of <gasps> the monster of the breath <laughs> that we are so scared that we overbreathe. Mm. We overbreathe and we overwork, 
80%, 85% of, of the time. This wow. is one of the most big problems about uh, the singers. Very often we have <laughs> tend to play, to pay a trainer, a teacher, 35 lessons to teach us to breathe less and to solve a problem that we created. Okay, set this. Let's say that we understood it. We are genius. <laughs> we don't over breathe anymore. We don't over work anymore. Of course, we need the support. Of course, we need the help. This remains true. This has to be there. But is it really about <sighs> that? Are we sure? Yes? Really? Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> maybe yes, maybe not. There is a component of, of course, of breath, of air. Okay. In the right proportion. And a big, big, big component of muscular sustain. We have to think as sportlers of the voice, as athletes of the voice, understand which muscles we need to engage. This will give us the breath support, which is not pushing air, but it's controlling air. And what I said at the start, uh, otherwise it's not clear because I did not explain it. I want to explain what I meant by saying resisting the air. Yeah, I said mm -hmm. this at the start. What is yeah. it? What does it mean? Resist what? What do you resist? Well, we are always very focused about the breath from this direction upwards, right? Okay, what am I doing here? What should I do? How mm -hmm. should I support? Oh my God. Well, let's change perspective. Let's come from here and look downwards like a camera. Are we resisting the air? Are we really closing well? How is our reduction? Remember, a clean, clear tone, rich, intense tone comes from the source. How you actually close well or not well mm, here. Very you important. mean close the vocal cords? That action, yes, is really uh, essential. Our answer, how we close. Huh? If you are a bit, um, how can I say, uh, too, too supple in the compression uh, of your vocal cords, yeah, mm, and the action is a bit lazy, a bit, <laughs> a bit <laughs> supple, uh, uh, the breath support will not solve it. You will support a breathy sound <laughs> yeah. and make it even worse. No. We need to uh, focus, first of all, mm, how is that action? So the breath is actually adjusting itself on what the breath will encounter on its way out. Yeah. So yeah, it's like a valve, really, like turning the really water on. Kind of. Yes, that action is so super important, so super important. Then yeah. why, my question to you, why so many, there's so many detractors from that? Like, it's, uh, I've seen so, so, so many uh, teachers that are against uh, any type of glottal activity. Oh, okay, no, okay, it has to okay, be okay, flowy okay. and all this. Let's, let's, let's clear this. First yeah. of all, we have three attacks, three answers. One yeah. is the aspirate. It's like, hello. Yeah. Hi. What is this? It's air before. Uh, hi. Before the closure. Okay. Very nice, maybe for jets, not for opera. <laughs> okay, well, this is one, one way. Then what we actually use in opera mm, are two um, way of using the onset. It's the, the very gentle one. It is the simultaneous one. So we uh, find it when we say, for example, yesterday, you, this means the closure finds the breath at the same time, yeah, same time. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, again, very, yeah. very gentle. And this is actually the ideal one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, eh. Beautiful. If you can do it, why not? Welcome. Yes. But I want to say, <laughs> yes, of course, it's, it's very elegant, uh, very gentle yeah. uh, and very safe uh, and healthy. But I want to say something. Okay. Super glottal, like sometimes German like to do. Well, uh, Ah, oh, yeah. well, my God, a bit, <laughs> a bit aggressive, I understand. And I think that it's okay to say, maybe not. <laughs> but hold on, we speak with actually baby glottal all the day, seven well, days 
a week. When yes. I say, when I say to you, ah, oh, how nice to see you. Oh, finally. What did I do? Ah, yeah. how nice to see you. Oh, what is this? It's baby glottal. Gently. Mm -hmm. Kind. And I speak like this, I mean, really all the day and all the week and all the year. And do I have problems with it? No. no. So, and we use, huh? we use baby glottal. Oh, we, we use it very often to give a little accent or to be very clear on an attacko. The, the secret is to do it in a kind, gentle, really baby <laughs> way. Huh? And not pushing, not pressing, not being aggressive, not fighting the voice. This is not okay. So also that in that sense, there are... So I guess there's two uh, there's two spectrums I guess wh by what you're explaining there's people that are singing um well there's three I guess there are singing... people who are singing we we we, we use all this uh, spectrum uh, we, yeah. are, we we can change we're like painters we have a lot uh, of colors in our voices depending yeah. on the aria depending on uh, the drama or if it is a comic or if it is uh, dramatic and we should use all this and knowing mm. how to do it and isolate it and be able to to master it and say, well, I'm like a painter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's interesting. Well, 35 red colors and 17 yellow. Is so it it's right? a matter. It's, it's, yeah, it's it's a matter of art too. The what you choose yeah, to. Yeah, these yeah, are yeah, tools, yeah. tools uh, that you should not um, be afraid of. But in the contrary, be thankful that we have them and knowing this is the point how to use them hmm? um, in a selective way. I, I have a question for you. In my experience, um, sopranos uh, tend to have a, an easier path to doing glottals in the high voice than the rest, uh, let's say the, the rest um, meaning male voices like baritones and tenors. Uh, I see rarely a baritone you know attacking a, i don't know a high g with a glottal like they if if you isolate the exercise it cannot doesn't work can it, have has that been that your experience also i can't tell you this uh, i i didn't notice this what i can tell you is that say because you you mentioned baritones they they might have problems up there but not uh with the glottal but with the range because um um, how can I say, such a voice sometime might have troubles to change from a thick fold to a thin yeah. fold. Mm. This is another story. <laughs> okay, it's so about it's about something else. Okay, it's not about the attack wounds. In... No, it's about uh, then the mass, how you manage to go to the higher register. Of course, to go to a higher register, you have to be aware of what is going in your uh, on in your instruments. You have to understand um, that uh, you need to, to change, well, the mass of your f vocal folds. Mm. And they have to become thinner and you need to help them to do this. So there is this maneuver of the lowering the larynx and vasculating it also. So it's a bit like, wait, I take this to make it more clear, clearer as possible. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like lowering and tilting and vasculating so yeah. this dong, becomes thinner like uh, the thin fold uh, chords in a violin and a guitar yeah, yeah? and yeah, sometimes okay, okay. heavy voices big vo big voices heavy voices low voices have troubles to, to do this so they have troubles up i think this is the main point oh. to have the courage and to well <laughs> to let to allow, let's say, uh, to the vocal folds to change shape. Mm -hmm. A big voice, a loud voice, <laughs> a, 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 um, a low voice sometimes has difficulty to go up because there is really an anatomical uh, change that has to happen and sometimes mm. uh, it does not happen. So with, what they need to do is to learn to, to tilt, which is not always easy. Sopranos in this are yes a bit more blessed certainly certainly mm. and uh, what can help might be to uh, think of crying crying okay oh my god look I, I show you i hope that you can <laughs> see it for the light 
Oh, did you see? Yes. Oh my god. Actually, yeah. it's very. It lowers, huh? Really? Yeah. Really? Oh, and if I put a finger, I can even feel uh, that it makes a sort of whoop. <laughs> yeah. Little movement. So let me see if it's true. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. In my case, it's very true because okay. I'm trained. And if uh, <laughs> this might be unfamiliar, it's just sometimes also a matter of repeating it. Everyone can learn it. Oh my God. Oh, yes. And this, oh, oh, this sort of lamentation here, this helps you to, to go up. No, okay. No matter, and and oh. the, the guy, the, the guys, the, the male they, they would have be doing it in chest voice, I guess. Like, oh yeah, my God, like that. Sometimes <laughs> they go up. Uh, how can I say it? Well, Because we have the falsetto thing, you know? It's, it's, no, 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 no. I'm speaking yeah. about real voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Um, first of all, men in general have a lot of testosterone and a lot of, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> yes, I'm the man of the situation. So they, they're not used to, to, to um, approach the voice in a gentle way. They think, yeah. let's go to make a bit of fitness, you know? And, right, and there right. is too much, too much energy, too much, uh, and this, Uh, gets in the voice. You have to understand that the voice is a mirror. It's a mirror of a muscular activity. It's not only a conception that we have in our inner ear, in our brain. Okay, it's also that because if we cannot imagine a sound, you cannot produce that sound. So mm -hmm. let's be clear. You need to have it here in your imagination, in your fantasy, in your inner ear, you have to um, have heard it somewhere to be able to reproduce it. Like yeah. the way we speak. Why do you speak the language that you speak, French or English? Why do I speak Italian? Because I heard it a thousand times, million times from my mother, even not knowing how the grammar, the verbs, the adjectives, the articles worked. I learned it because I heard it. So, so uh, we, we need yeah. to have it in our inner ear, the sound to be able to reproduce it. So this is one thing, but remember that it is also not just a result of our imagination. It is a result of our muscular activity. So if your muscular activity is too, <clears throat> this is the sound you will get. You will need, never be able to make a, a subtle sound and to get to this tilting thing, because we are speaking about this now, yeah. we need to understand that vocal folds are muscles and we need to let mm, them to surrender a bit. Mm. If there is too much work, uh, uh, difficult. Mm. And uh, okay, uh, one point that you mentioned you ha that you have to be hear it in, uh, uh, to hear it in your head. Um, I guess um, uh, uh, maybe there's a, a bit of difficulty there too uh, because I mean, when when you hear, uh, I don't know, a Franco Corelli, a Mario del Monaco, I don't know, even Pavarotti, it's a very vira, a viril, uh, it's a very singing. masculine sound when mm -hmm. they sing, yeah. even the high C sometimes sounds. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I guess if you hear that in your head, you you might be thinking, oh, I have to like uh, give yes. it just like them, you know. <laughs> Yes, yes, of course, I understand everything, uh, I understand, I understand, and of course we uh, learn a lot also copying, like in art, I mean Michelangelo, Raffaello, Leonardo, they yeah. were not uh, uh, born out of the blue mm? Mm. from Venus, they had also other big maestri examples which they mm, copied somehow, so we, we look, we look at Callas, we look at Mira Lafreni, we listen and we try to somehow <laughs> go in that direction. Uh, and this is okay, and this is fine. The thing is, we have to understand and respect this and, and accept this, that our body, our teeth, our face, our bones, our spaces are unique. Yeah? So the face of Pavarotti was a, a singer face. He was very open here. The bones, the teeth, uh, the, how do you say this? The, um, the front. Yes. The so, <laughs> uh, and so uh, you have to do, I think, the best mm, of what you can do with what Mother Nature gave you, with what your father, your mother, your grandfather or God or nature gave you. 
Of course, we have these examples, yes. But this is also why there are voices so extremely different, which is nice. My God, I'm very happy about that. So <laughs> no face is, uh, every face is unique. No face can be cloned. We are all uniques, right? And yeah. voice is, is the same. So we have one breath uh, support system and it works <laughs> normally in one way, but of course uh, the result uh, can be different depending on our spaces, the length of our neck, for example, mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, the velum. Uh, it's, it's a bit uh, difficult, you understand, to uh, aim for only one sound. I think we should try to become the best version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. All right, that's great advice. Uh, yeah. Listen, Capucin, I, I thought about putting uh, some examples of you singing uh, also so uh, <laughs> so people can really see how you are in stage. Uh, <laughs> and um, and maybe after I, I see that we, we've, we've got some uh, questions there in the in the in the chat, I think. So um, uh, leaving some people so some um, some time uh, for yeah. people to put their okay. questions and then we'll come back uh ah. and and uh and yes and 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 have a, a little bit more of a of a talk okay so so i thought about playing uh the bc d'arte from oh, from tosca? tosca yeah you want do you want to say something about this role before we play it well it's the dream role <laughs> <laughs> for a singer because uh, i think everyone knows the tosca role but if if some of you do not know it it's the story of, of a singer, of an opera singer. So of an opera singer, well, hello, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and then Italian, hello, that's me. <laughs> and very beautiful, hello, that's me. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, but well, it's, uh, you know, it's very easy to identify yourself and there is a, a lot of love and passion. And so it takes place in Rome. So, uh, well, it, it's a bit a dream role of every singer. So I was uh, very grateful, very happy to have Do this Do you song. remember how many Toscas you sang? No, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> All right, so let's go jump with that. By the way, by for the people who don't know, Giacomo Puccini, it's um, one of his most famous, I would say the most yeah. famous maybe. Yes, yeah. so it's uh, Tosca. And, uh, and if you come to Italy, uh, hopefully soon, uh, after this COVID uh, <laughs> period. And you want to know more about Giacomo Puccini, please come to Tuscany, one of the most beautiful region, I would say not of Italy, but on, on the planet. Yeah. And go to the little town of Lucca, Lucca, mm, not far from Florence, actually, really 15 minutes near, where he was born. And there is his house in the center of Lucca. And uh, it's a beautiful museum. There is the piano on which he composed the Turandot. But really, 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 really. But the piano on which he composed Tosca, you can find it uh, in his villa outside the city in the location of Torre Tower, Torre Tower uh -huh. del Lago of the Lake. This is the, the name of this village on a lake. So it's a beautiful villa still there and Actually, the maestro is there in the villa because one room was completely covered by marmor and that became his, the grave of Giacomo, uh, Puccini, Elvira, the wife, the son and other two family members. So he's in the house. And when you enter, oh, the scary. first thing that you see is the piano on which he composed Tosca and many 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 other details of him. It's really uh, very emotional. You think well, maybe he went out to, to buy the newspaper and he comes back. Everything is there. Wow. It's really amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I'll Pencil, be scared to go there. His presses, his books, uh, everything is there. And you can really feel him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Torre wow. del Lago. Yeah, uh -huh. go there. <laughs> oh, I'm scared. <laughs> I, I think uh, he will get mad with me for singing badly some of his uh, arias. <laughs> <laughs> But, well, in but yeah, the, no, no, the summer, really. if you come to the summer, there is also a very prestigious uh, festival, the festival 
Pucciniano, where they just yeah. perform Puccini operas in Torre del Lago. Eh? In Torre del Lago, ah, yeah, I didn't know. This uh, villa, okay, just to say two words about him. Wow, that's great. Well, great, great, uh, great uh, for singers and for any tourists, really, as advice by, by uh, Capucin. So let's go right now. I'll, I'll take my technician then to uh, play that uh, beautiful uh, Visi d'Arte interpretation by Capucin, Chiaudani, soprano, and, and now teacher also. Here I am back. <laughs> Bravo. Ah, thank Bravo. you, thank you. Ah, wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to come back here. Yes. Oh, great. Hey, thank. Magnifique. Yes, but I, and I'm not. I'm not magnifique. Puccini is magnifique. No, but no, but your interpretation also. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so uh, uh capucin so we have um um one of your students here that would like to uh, uh um, um make some live questions actually uh so i, I was wondering uh, do you think we can let her in now yeah yeah 
not? Yeah. Yes. All <laughs> no. right. So uh, here is um, uh, one of uh, her students is, is uh, Palombi. Oh. Athena, Athena, there you go. Uh, one of the most beautiful ladies on the planet, Athena. <laughs> As the name says. <laughs> Hello, Athena. Hi, you. From California. Hi. Ciao. Ah, you're from California. Great, great. Well, uh, international here, huh? Great. So uh, yes, listen. Uh, I, yeah, I, I wanted uh, to, to the people to be able to uh, make some questions. So uh, it's it's your time. <laughs> Kapusin, I would like to ask a question in more detail about your philosophy of vocal pedagogy. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Well. Um, <clears throat> Yes, I would like to uh, be able mm, to bring out the best versions of yourself, the best version of every one of you, the best version of of my students. Huh? And I, 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 I believe really that a good teacher is also a mental trainer. I strongly believe this because because I saw it, because I, I was there, because the mind is even more important of our body. I must say, I was there. I was one of the runners in these Olympia Games. And the one who won were not always the best singer. They were the best minds. Mm. It's exactly like for athletes. Eh? And the athletes do have mental coach. Why should we not also have mental coach? I don't understand this. And uh, for me, it's really something missing, something it's, it's, it's a big hole in conservatories, academies, universities. I think for the next generation, we should give to singers also this strength. Some time we go out there, we make our studies, our diploma, we know how to use the body, blah, 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 everything is fine. Then we go out there and tough reality jumps in. Life jumps in. You are there and you are completely unprepared. Uh, how managing uh, stage fright, for example? How managing uh, <laughs> the stress, the, the competition? How managing uh, all this kind of, of life where you are constantly uh, under exam, actually, and where you have to prove how good you are and you're alone? no one helps you no one takes you by hand so a teacher needs to uh, in this very moment until we will not have a <laughs> mental coach uh, in conservatories and academy uh, have the role to make you very 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 strong i notice that the more i say to a person wow well done this is so good what you're doing it's it's so amazing fantastic this person elevates to another level, even if maybe in that very moment it was not so perfect, but <laughs> believing that you are able to do it makes it possible. We have examples of persons with handicaps, without legs, without arms, which did incredible things. And people said, you can't do this. And they did it. Why? Because they were strong here. So to make a career, you need to be an athlete at many levels. You need to know your body, every centimeter, like a violinist knows his or her instrument. Yes, and you need to be very strong here. So turn, going back to my philosophy, to empower the person in front of me at every possible level, at every possible level. And the more they are strong here, the more they will be the best versions of themselves, for sure. Yeah? <laughs> Is it answered or not? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> I, uh, well, I didn't put the question, so I... <laughs> Do you hear but, us? Athena, that was uh, the answer <laughs> for your question, yeah? I absolutely think that you do empower your students and support them very much. 
I think you're a wonderful teacher in this way on empowering everyone at every level. Uh, another question I would like to ask you is your advice on the audition process and ARIA selection and auditions. Well, uh, the thing is, um, in auditions, uh, we are usually under such a stress, uh, adrenaline situation, <laughs> which is completely normal. It happens to everyone. So uh, welcome to the boat. Um, so we have to go really very, very sure, like blind, like under an automatic pilot, under the shower. So what I suggest, what I advise, do something where you feel really very, very at ease. Don't take risks in audition. Maybe you can take risks in a concert. Maybe you can take risks in another e event. But an audition is, of course, something that should bring you uh, a job. <laughs> so <laughs> to survive. Uh, and uh, yes, we have to go uh, with very sure areas, uh, things that we have already tried and tried again and again. Of course, there are exceptions. Sometimes. That's clear. We have to audition for a new role. <laughs> so there is no escape. We have to do it and we do it. But I mean, in this kind of auditions where you can choose uh, the areas, of course, I, I kindly and warmly recommend to do things that uh, you already tried more than once or where you feel very, very at ease. Can you speak a little bit about like contrasting arias in the selection that you choose. Ah, okay, you meant this. Yes, yes, but this is what, uh, without saying, excuse me, uh, then I didn't get uh, the whole uh, answer. Yes, yes, yes. Different languages, different styles. You need to show <laughs> how good you are uh, in different, of course, uh, ways. I mean, show your, all your possibilities. So if you have uh, one legato aria, take another aria with maybe coloraturas, no? If you have one Italian, take one uh, in, in English or, or German, French, so different styles, different also, uh, um, how do you say, time zones, <laughs> I think historical, huh? so that you really show, mm, if it's not, I mean, an audition for a specific role, then it's another thing. Then usually you have to to bring the role or the main areas. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, Tena. Yeah. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, uh, thanks a lot to Thank Athena uh, for for uh, for uh, taking Thank the time to so uh, come come uh, do some questions. Um, I'm doing this uh, uh, every every uh, uh, Zoom meeting that we have. I, I have one or three persons, depending, you know, on, on how. How long it goes? Um, if you want to uh, in the next in the next um, edition of La Cena Tete a Tete, if you want to be there and ask some questions to my invites, um, you can send me an email to Adrian at Lacena org. That's uh, Adrian A D R I A N at Lacena, like in Italian Lacena L A S C E N A dot or O R G. So thanks, Athena, and and, and uh, Good luck friend. with your career. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, uh, Capuccine, so a lot of a, a lot of uh, things came uh, there from uh, from. Yes. Uh, you, you've yes. been repeating this quite a bit, so I'm going to ask a question about this, about the 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 athlete of the voice. You you saying this all the time, and um, I wonder is is that an actual. Uh, just like a metaphor or you do you also mean that a singer must be in shape like a like a muscular it's not, a, it's not a metaphor it's not a metaphor it's really well known that uh, an opera uh, performer can be absolutely compared to an olympic athlete the effort is so big and it's not only physically huh? also mentally huh? mm, the concentration uh, so it's not a metaphor. And apart from that, apart from that, um, the thing is this. Uh, I think um, a lot of confusion comes from uh, the fact that uh, not always um, singers are really aware or, mm, let's say, mm, conscious uh, what happens really in their body. 
or how the body functions, yes? I mean, you don't need to be a doctor and know that this uh, muscle uh, uh, has this name and there is on the left. It's not about that. It's, uh, uh, I'm not speaking about this, but having at least an idea what happens with my velum and can I isolate it? And how many ways of using my velum are there? What happens if it is up? To my sound what happens if it is down what happens if it is in the middle uh, position and what impact does it have what happens if i use my lips or if i don't use them do i use them how much do i use them does it have an impact i mean i see very often persons coming to me very confused because they never took the time to really understand that really they are like a, a, a violin with <laughs> made of many elements and you can isolate these elements. You can really isolate and, and and get different results if you recognize them and you and if you take the, the time, the skill to be able to uh, train them isol in, in isolation. What happens with my tongue? What is the best position of my tongue? How should it be? Low? High? Flat? How is it? And why? Uh, all these things, there are so many things. What happens with my larynx? Does it go up? Does it go down? Does it do this or that? Is it true? Is it not true? There is not really consciousness about some time. I mean, I mean not always, eh? but very often a lot of talent, a lot of wow musicality and little consciousness about the fact that we are a living instrument and that we need to know uh, the parts of our instrument like a, a lutist, lutist, which <laughs> who creates the, the, the violin, no? Uh, the more you know about this, what happens in my head? Is my head involved in singing? Or is it just there to resonate? Or does it work? Does it have a role in singing? Are here muscles which are actually sustaining my voice? Yes or no? Most of the people don't even know it. The answer is yes. And are here muscles? in the neck which help me and stabilize maybe my velum, maybe my pharynx, maybe my larynx. Is it true? Most of people don't know this. But when I was younger and singing uh, in career, I was also was one of these singers, <laughs> singing with talent, singing with musicality, singing with instinct, and with very little um, consciousness, awareness of this. this was a, a path that I went through later when I started to teach. And they said, well, should I do it seriously, honestly, consciously, with responsibility? Then I have to know more. I cannot just say, well, try to imitate this wonderful round sound. Do you like it? OK, do it. <laughs> I should say, listen, if you mm, use these muscles in this way, this will happen. Mm. Why don't we try? Mm, and it starts to make a sense. You think, oh, but then it's like a recipe. What? I mean, if I put a bit more of this element and a bit of less of that element, then I get to that result or to another result. Yes, it is exactly like that. Mm -hmm. Chiaroscuro. What is chiaroscuro? Well, chiaroscuro is a bit singing, a bit light and a bit dark. No, it's not this. Anatomically, uh, <laughs> things happen in our instrument and knowing what happens makes the difference not knowing aren't, a question about it. that is it aren't aren't you afraid that by uh trying to uh, separate all these things that the singing is going to be somewhat mechanical and even that is makes the the singers sing worst uh, sometimes because they they're thinking oh well my palate is here and then I have to breathe, and then and then making it maybe too complicated. Um, it's just a question. Huh? No, no, it's it's a good question. It's a very clever question, actually. Of course, you have to be uh, careful. Yes, to to remain in the music, to remain. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, to not uh, make it too mechanical. But I think a bit of consciousness, finding the balance. No, we are artists, and keeping this artistry high as much as possible and making really music with passion and with, and which and with heart i mean at the end of the story if we
go at the end of the book, we jump all 25 chapters and we go to the end. The happy end is to emotion people. This is the point. Basta. Mm. All the 25 chapters are just a path to arrive to this point. So if a person, as a singer, maybe with not a good technique, maybe making mistakes, can emotion me, I pay gratefully a ticket and even go a second time to listen to him. I mm. don't care about perfection. Perfection is something that does not exist in this world, by the way. Maybe in recording studios. So I don't care about perfection. But yes, I would like to give to person, people around me, younger singers, a bit more serenity. I see many singers struggling because no one explained them uh, how their, their body functions and they have this fantastic talent and joy and wish to do things and let's go. Wow, 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 wow. And then at a certain point, pa, no, the difficulty, but I'm always tired. But the voice is getting worse because I'm not sustaining well. I don't know what to do. My talent is not enough. So there must be a good balance, I think, huh? about artistry huh? and consciousness mm. without making yourself crazy about knowing every detail. But I, I try to make it very simple, actually. I try to, to explain it in very clear, very easy, very clear, very simple elementary maneuvers. Yeah. Mm. Yesterday I did the yeah. workshop and the, the, the examples who was there can say it were super simple, but straight to the point to feel your body. Yeah. Yeah. So um, about and now about the, the mental uh, uh, space type of and coaching and uh, what you were mentioning before. Um, what is how how would you recommend somebody that to deal with uh, self-doubt because i think that's the main thing i see uh in many singers is is the is the fact of, of self-doubt in themselves and and finding that they are not good enough and all that kind of things how can a singer get over that and is there a routine they can follow or some sort of mantra i don't know well, I don't believe in magician mantras and Ave Maria, Piera di Grazia. You know, Corelli used to uh, pray a lot. For yeah, no, when, and every path, know. every story is different. Very yeah. often we bring in our singing uh, our personal story. This mm. I, I believe. So uh, uh, sometimes uh, our fears are really ancient fears of not being loved, of not being recognized and not of being accepted from uh, maybe our family or our parents. And you bring this in the singing. And I noticed that persons who are very relaxed on stage and very self-conscious, really like, ah, oh, I'm able to do this, uh, had a good uh, emotional support in the back. And uh, mostly they were loved at home. So we, we are the mirror of this. And of course, it's it's a very deep, uh, difficult issue. You cannot, what? <laughs> but you can help, you can help. So the teacher can help you to find more balance in this. Of course, which uh, what will help also is to get good results. This will uh, somehow mm, give you confirmations. And I think to master well your art. If you know that you know, you know that you know. I mean, it's important to know that you know. But if you know that you, but if you know that you don't know enough, well, mm. so I think it's important to work in a conscious way. That was the thing about what we speak spoke before, eh? to to know your body well. In this sense, outlet of the voice, knowing the body, knowing how it functions. If I do this or that, uh, if I push, uh, what is the sustain? How do I do it? Hmm? Yeah, so far, uh, yeah, if I can understand by knowing more, you gain confidence and therefore you clean up a little bit the mess in the head. The, the, those voices saying, oh, you cannot sing. You're going to miss the high note or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we started uh, this uh, meeting speaking about uh, breath support. You asked me about yeah. breath support, but I was <laughs> yeah. not finished. May I finish? Yeah, actually, yes. Some... <laughs> or, or not, or is some yeah. other priorities. I think it's important to finish. No, I uh, agree. I agree with you. Yes. Circle because I, I started to a bit uh, saying, well, let's try not to push too much breath. Hmm? Let's try to learn to breathe just enough what we need. That was what we said before. But how we do, how we should do it, we didn't say it, right? <laughs> no, so, actually, no, we, we didn't important. go there. Yeah, it's important. So, uh, of course, these are things that need time. So you need time to make a singer and not five minutes. Uh, <laughs> but by the way, don't expect to uh, learn how to sing just by listening yes. to this, just telling people, you know, some, some younger people, sometimes they believe in magic like that, but actually you need like lessons with the person. Yes. You know? But just to give some di direction, some, some advices, yes, As simple things. Eh? Uh, going back to the body and how our body functions, yes to be a bit more aware. Well, we can, for example, watch here what happens in our body, for example, when we cry or when baby cries, when, when a baby cries. We can put this finger here in our navel and this here and just observe. This means let the body do the job. Don't uh, interfere, don't do anything, just observe. What happens if I cry like a baby? Okay, let's see. Also, I'm watching closely. Okay. Yes. I was not doing anything. Eh? This is absolutely my body. I was not pushing inside, outside, up, down, nothing. I'm okay. looking. So what happens here, as you can see, this expands, this expands, you see it? And this slightly sort of goes in. Actually, it's not really in, it's more up, it's more this. Mm. So this is what the body does. And what the body does is always right. We are not interfering, we are not disturbing. So this is the appoggio. Appoggio in Italian means leaning, means I lean, I open. And this is mm -hmm. my diaphragm is uh, uh, opening. Okay, yes. nice, very good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Diaphragm. <laughs> and what happens here? Oh, interesting, something completely different. And again, I'm not doing it. The body knows it better. It's helping. It's assisting. And this is the sostegno. So in Italian language, actually, because we are the most clever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so, such an Italian thing to say. <laughs> I'm talking. Come on. Uh, we have these two wonderful words. Actually, we do have mm, a more clear definition, which is not just breast support. Boom. And this says a lot, but at the end it says nothing. Yes, breast support, what? No, we have really two words, appoggio and sostegno. Re oh, okay. How we sing. We sing. The first time I hear the sostegno. Well, in that, sense, both, in that sense. It's time that you have to, uh, uh, to know this because mm. actually it's how we sing always. We need actually always these two energies, appoggio. And sustain you. So this is very clear. It means that this wall, and now we get to the real important point. That's why I'm making this example, okay? Yes. This wall are the abs, okay? The, the, the abdominal muscles, okay? They are always with us. They are always working. Involuntarily. The body does it. This means that I don't need to do actually an extra... <laughs> I don't need to do. I need don't need to push. I don't mm. need to exaggerate and overwork. Why? Because that would be pushing too much breath pressure up, 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 up to my vocal cords. Yes. Right, right. I let it happen. 
I allow my body to do the job, which is completely in balance. He knows it best and he does it for me. So these are the assistants. Mm, and they are always with us. So this is the good news of the day. Now, the question is, okay, wonderful said, but this is just crying. How do I do when I sing Scarpia, when I sing Tosca? <laughs> how do I do this? And it is a legitimate question. I would like to know how to sing Scarpia too. <laughs> or long notes or high notes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We need, of course, uh, to increase the energy. This is without saying. And we need to do two main things. One is resisting the air. Resisting the air, we do it at two levels. One at the vocal folds level, this means with abduction, the first apogeus is here. If this is not in place, ciao, bye bye, bye bye. You will sing like, uh, Michel, my bell. You will sing like this. Mm. If the abduction is not proper. So watch out, eh, because this is <laughs> the first valve. It's really, ah, uh, ah. Uh, and there is this sort of appoggio. We also, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, resist the air here. And then the, the real big appoggio with the body is, of course, here. And it is resisting the air. So if I take the breath uh, and I open my body when, when I inhale, when I sing, I should never do that. Never. If you do it, please, please, please believe me. It will not help you. Don't squeeze your body. Don't make this when, when you sing. Don't, ah, don't mm. do this. But after that you have inhaled, remain in the inhaling gesture, please. And oh, oh. Oh, this is the solar plexus, yes? Yeah, yeah. This is the bone. This okay, is that's your solar heart. plexus there. Okay. Yes, it and here is there. now okay, yeah, yeah, just... the solar plexus, and you just open it. And by using this sort of consonants, which make an obstacle with your teeth and with your lips, eh? like Z or like Z. Or like what happens? This is a nice thing. <laughs> you feel more your body. Yeah, <laughs> you feel you more your breath. Support. Yeah, yeah. System. yeah. So why don't you use it to find it? If you don't know how to do it, you just and of course this involves the whole ring. Why? Well, because we should think three dimensional, like a ring. Okay. Like an umbrella that opens. When mm. it opens, it opens. And when it closes, it's closed. It's one. It's the umbrella. It doesn't matter. Because also, this is another question. Well, <laughs> is it more in the front? Is it more in the back? Yeah, yeah, is it more yeah. on the right? Is it more on the left? No. It's opening or closing. And uh, you say nothing squeezes, but okay, one no. thing. What... So we yeah. open uh, when we inhale first. And when we sing, we stay and we go on. And this, the abdominal wall will help. Actually, there is this movement inside my body because they assist automatically, exactly like when I was crying two minutes ago. Mm. It's like, um, how, do, how do you say in English? So that kind of talks in? It's a bit, this is sustaining. Yeah, like some talks. people feel it here more inwards. Yeah. Some people feel it more outwards, but actually ah. it's not in and not out. It's actually up. It's helping. Yeah. So, this is helping. This is sustaining. Sustenio. And this is the appoggio. Yeah. And so some people can actually because that's uh, actually a debate that's go some with some people that some of them they say ah yeah you have to apologize but like out like going out and some people say in so it's kind of I guess it okay. depends on how you feel it then it's not really... I know I know I know everything I know everything yeah. I, I know about this uh, <laughs> discussions right. well why don't you observe your body and then you don't need to discuss anymore <laughs> I mean you you let it happen and you see eh, that when you breathe in well first of all you open now if i squeeze okay 
If I yeah. scream, it's gone. The air is gone. How can I sing long arias like in classical singing? This will be absolutely impossible. So I will now explain you why there is so much confusion. The confusion comes because of one thing, one point, and it is this one. I tell you now what. The confusion comes because at a certain moment, so we resist the air in the sense that we open here and clear. This yeah. happens also there and this happens also here. So it's really everywhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is open. This sustains a bit. This helps. Okay. At a certain moment for long notes or for long areas, we will feel okay, nice, but now <clears throat> it's over. I need mm, more, some help. <laughs> okay, okay. I have still two bars. How do I do this? God help me. Yeah. So what happens then? And this is mostly uh, around the end uh, of a phrase. Uh, after the first half, then, but only then, and not at the start of the sentence, we can voluntarily, and not involuntarily, voluntarily ask to the apps, okay, thank you, can now you really help me? And we squeeze them like a toothpaste. Here. Ah, okay. So you open, you remain in the inhaling gesture. And at the very end, I helped because it was like, okay. I uh. need a little extra, yeah. And this is the conception of big discussion and confusion. And actually, it's not necessary. If you know when to do it, actually, no one is right and no one is wrong. You have yeah. to understand, okay, it's only a matter of understanding when to do it. Because if you do it too early, you have too much pressure. You have, yeah. okay, okay, oh my God. And what happens, you know, when we push too much air, there is, a, there is this problem. A lot of you, I'm sure, has, have experienced that. Our throat mm, thinks, because it's intelligent and wants to protect us, okay, there is a problem, a danger, something not right, too much pressure, I close. So we feel like, oh my God, today nothing functions. I have to push my voice. What is it with my voice? I don't feel my voice. I'm not free. So we, I push more. And what does the larynx do? Okay, I squeeze more. Mm -hmm. I will protect you more. And this is a devil diabolic a circle. So we go in constriction. Hmm. If you go in constriction, this is uh, something that every opera singer <laughs> really has experienced it go in retraction open your vocal uh, your false vocal cords what really closes are the force above the the true the false vocal cords mm -hmm. like when we uh, make a heavy when it, we take in the hand a heavy piano yeah uh, we squeeze and we and everything closes yeah the, the vocal the false vocal cords <laughs> close. So what helps is mm, uh, very easy maneuver, really super easy. Think about an inner smile. You can feel it even if you put one hand here and one there, you can even feel it. It's rather clear. Huh? You, you, you smile inside as if you would see something very, very strange comic on the street and you make. <gasps> oh, yeah. So, Duck. Mm. It opens. Yeah. But before arriving to that, to have the need of making the retraction, please don't push. <laughs> so <laughs> avoid the problem at uh, yeah at the start. So about the breath support, uh, to find the breath support with uh, such consonants like zzz, zzz, zzz. you can, for example, this was the workshop of yesterday. Very simple things. <laughs> or a bit lower, doesn't matter. And 
when you open and you learn to open and you learn to reprogram your muscular memory in that sense, opening mm -hmm. your body. And then slowly, slowly, you can play with it with also the V of Venice, the J of Jean, and then you can connect it with a vowel. Hmm? For example, and you open, and then third step, you make the legato. Same story, nothing changes. Always opening, yeah? So by doing these very simple things, uh, you learn a new behavior, you really create a new muscular memory and you realize, wow, it's not an impossible dream. It's possible and it's even simple. Simple as that? What? Yes. Is, uh, I had a question actually about uh, the, 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 that exercise you're doing. Is your breath pressure equal in your consonant as in your vowel? Is, no, isn't there no, a difference oh no, between no, no. the... It's a dynamic process, of course. It changes on behalf also on many factors. Eh? Okay. Consonants is one thing, vowels another thing. We open a lot. So to avoid uh, that we uh, maybe lose too much breath, we should actually focus a bit more. It's not... So this is terribly <laughs> dangerous. It's so, so. so I focus and I open only when needed. So the center of the voice, for example, I will not open so much. I will only open my higher register. Yeah. yeah. If I open a lot, I will actually s sabotage all the good work I did here. Yeah. If I do the whole work wonderfully, properly, and then I just so it's gone it's gone so i have to be uh, so intuitive to understand wait a moment i need to direct the sound i need to give a shape this sound like the bed of a river it's like the story which i uh, mention always often <laughs> my students know it by heart by now the tube in the garden the more you have a big hole the less pressure you have the more little the hole is, the more pressure you get. So, and not so. So you have to be aware about these difficulties with open vowels. Huh? You have to be careful. Huh? Mm. A, A or E is more easy because it's less yeah, yeah, yeah. open. It's already <laughs> easier. E is easier. Yeah, but of course, it's like having actually inside a sort of little computer that very intuitively, very fast, very change gear constantly and right. said, OK, I need more pressure. Wait, a bit less. it's something that we do actually instinctively, huh? depending also on the pitch, depending also on the volume, depending on the vowel depending on which vowel, depending on the consonant, depending on which consonant, depending on the accents of the, of the sentence. So there are many, uh, how do you say, variables, variables. Mm. So I, I guess you're, you're talking here about the, to the, the, the focus in the sound. Uh, could you, I, I guess that's a, I guess we're running already a little bit off time, but if, if there's one point that I would like to touch with you also um, before we finish, it's also your, uh, this focus of the sound and uh, what Italians call the squillo, the suono esquilante, which mm. means a uh, ring in the voice or, or mm. harmonics, uh, rich yeah. harmonics. So uh, could you tell us what that is and, and how yes. to, you get that sound as, as a as a singer and and, 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 the, and probably yes. it's a different strategy. I don't know if for different singers, but yes. yeah. Of course, this is exactly, now we come to the point about knowing your body. You said before, but maybe knowing too much, doesn't it make it a bit mechanical, you know? Yeah, you asked me this. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. With right, with right. We always need, of course, at the end to be artists and musicians, of course. But well, a tiny bit of consciousness, 
<laughs> it's not so bad. We can find a good balance between the two things, I think. Why not? For example, uh, the recipe of opera or classical singing, let's say opera, because there are many kind of classical singing. Opera is chiaroscuro. The, the, the word, this is very international, actually, it is an Italian definition, which means light and dark. And with light, people usually feel this uh, mask thing, this squillo. Ah, 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 ah. You hear the tenors yeah. <laughs> in the theaters, in the garderobe. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Maestro, ah, ah, ah. la voce, ah, ah. buongiorno. Ah. And they try it, they try to find it before the performance, right? I think you are a tenor yourself. <laughs> yeah, there's a, a, a lot of, a lot of uh, nya, 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 and that, that kind of, uh, yeah. Yes, yes. But I actually don't think that's squillo. Actually, with the years, I learned that you really have to have the right combination, like you're saying, of, of chiaro and oscuro. I'm still working on that. Yeah. And I find sometimes you can have this chiaro like, eh, but if you don't have like a body down in, inside that clarity, it kind of doesn't carry anyways. It's weird. I don't, I don't know if you experienced this. Well, um, listen, I, <laughs> um, it will carry if it, it will carry, if it will be well grounded and well sustained. If you sing with your whole body, huh? Huh? if you have really a deep connection here, huh? by the way, I would like to say one thing, which I did not say before, huh? because there are so many things. When we want to have a real deep appoggio, appoggio means really grounded, especially for jumps, especially for uh, um, high notes or loud notes, for example, I don't know. Yeah, like octave. Yeah, so you can try it. I, I take just one minute and then I come to the chiaroscuro oh, yeah. again back. Just one minute. Eh? You can yeah. try it sitting. Eh? You t can sit on yourself so that you can really feel your pelvis floor. Your pelvic floor is what sustains the torso. It's what you have really uh, underneath the torso, which sustains you and also between your legs. Okay. And please, can you really give a sort of energy downwards, weight towards the chair? Eh? <laughs> what happens in my body is, I'm opening, but downwards. So I'm opening here, my back, uh, where I have my hands, re yeah. reading, where I have the kidneys here. Uh. Oh, 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 oh. Mm. I'm going down, but going down, I'm actually activating my pelvis floor. And this is the big, strong appoggio, which is very often needed in opera. Uh. You will feel it better if you sit, if you don't know how to do it and you sit, you will feel it because you will feel it be between the chair and the body. Hmm. Oh, 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 oh. What I'm doing is opening here again, as I did one second ago, Yeah. Oh, 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 the back. So by opening the back, the good news is that I will make shahmate to the diaphragm because the diaphragm is bigger in the back. Uh, okay. This? If you don't know it, you can see it on YouTube. There are so many videos. Huh? Huh. Uh, and here we have, I mean, eight meters of intestine. This mm -hmm. is not uh, always a uh, diaphragm, but here, yes, we have the diaphragm really big because the ribs go lower and arrive yeah, here. Really low, yeah. And uh, the diaphragm is more developed there and is attached to the spine. And if I lower and if I open my back here, and if I make a pressure against my hand here, like this, oh, 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 it can be also mechanical, also without singing, look. Simple as that, super easy, super simple. What I'm also doing, I'm actually expanding and stretching my diaphragm. And I'm actually making shahmates. He cannot move again. He can't raise up, he can't jump up. So then I have that, ah, control on my diaphragm. Actually, we should say breath control, control, the breath management. Mm -hmm. We get this eh? and to feel it so you can play with your back and just open it. Look, I'm not singing. I'm just opening. Simple as that. 
not difficult. And if you sing, you will feel that the energy goes downwards oh, to your Towards the chair. Oh, yeah. Really to the earth. This is what we mean when we say a very grounded sound. Yeah. This is what we mean. Grounded in that sense. The energy just goes really to the ground of your body. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that was just to finish. Uh, and for what concerns the chiaroscuro, mm, it's really the recipe of opera. The recipe of opera is like a recipe in the kitchen. We need a bit of salt and a bit of sugar. <laughs> we need a bit of chiaro, this clarity, this light, this squillo. Some may name it mask. And this scuro, this oh, very noble, this round sound, very elegant. <laughs> so. Uh, the scuro comes from a lower larynx. Clear? Point. Yeah. If you don't know it, it is like when you like, uh, this. like when you uh, uh, when you go like this, for example. When you, for example, cry a bit, and or also when you laugh a bit, it goes down. Or also when you think about the u, I work a lot with the u position. Yeah. And I put all the vowels in this wonderful vase uh, of U, because the U does this wonder. This is the U. E U. <laughs> e U. Yeah, and, it's going down yeah. right away. And we have this Kuro. Simple as that. Is it difficult? Come on. Don't tell me that it's difficult. <laughs> so if you know how to do it, it becomes like ta 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 ta. A strategy. <laughs> These are maneuvers. But if you don't know how to do it, you, you struggle, you just don't know it. But, <clears throat> for example, if instead of singing, larynx is up, eh? Yeah, yeah. You do. There is a bit of oo in every sound. What mm. happens? It happens automatically, if you want it or not, it happens. <laughs> that your larynx lowers so your flute becomes longer and the beautiful news of the day is that you will get much more harmonics and richer sound <clears throat> maybe you will think at the start oh my god but is this me i mean i was always singing ah, and now it's so round well yes it's the best version of you yes which you don't know still hmm. yes for classical singing, it's quite important. Maybe not always for other kind of singing, eh? um, but for classical singing, it's this chiaroscuro. It's this was what we really need. And also another beautiful thing about the ooh, eh? that if you do a real Italian dark, nice ooh, which is not u, because mm. Americans like to do u. Uh, no, yeah. thank you. U. It will. <laughs> it I will, know all the bad tricks. <laughs> yeah, it will also have uh, an impact on your volume, which, well, this is maybe for another meeting. It will rise up. It will make this. The U? U. Ah, oh, I didn't think nice about that. U, and you feel it. You can try it also now. You feel now. here. Yeah, you feel it. It's like you open a door here kind of thing. It has an impact, yes, on your velum. Your velum starts to whoop. Okay, good morning, and rises up. And also, it has an impact on your pharynx. Your pharynx starts to stretch. Oh, interesting. And what happens then? It happens that your voice will be amplified. So with this beautiful O, you have so many <laughs> advantages that I would suggest you to try it at least. If you're not used, at least try. It. But there are some, I, I mean, just by <clears throat> personal experience, there are some dangers with the ooh too, is that the if you don't do the proper ooh, the voice can actually ooh, kind of um, yeah, yeah. No, no, uh, no, no, no. be muffled the, too. So, <clears throat> yeah. Of course, no, no. Just, it has to be in the balance because we're speaking about chiaroscuro. Yeah. Wait, I'm not finished. You are uh, <laughs> making now a question where I'm not finished. Sorry, we sorry. We have sorry. the balance. We need also the chiaro, which is this mask. A lot of people will say, Sing in the mask, feel the sound here, sing under, um, behind your nose, sing here, right? Sing out of your eyes, because we have this perception. And it's okay that we have this perception, because we do have this perception, point. 
The truth is that the mask does not happen here. It does not happen behind your eyes. It does not happen behind your nose. It does not happen here, even if you feel it there, which is okay. And so in the normal way of saying, we say, thing in the mask and everyone understands it. What happens is something else which happens here. The epiglot is that sort of leaf that closes and opens when we drink and when we eat, otherwise we would just die. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for the job. But apart from this closing completely, it has another function. It can also close partially. So when it closes partially, the spaces will be reduced and it starts to make this sound, this, this kind of sound. Ah, ah. I'm American. A lot of Americans speak like this. I'm American. How are you? This is the epiglot that does this movement. Or what can I say? You tell you, uh, eh, 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 I'm the witch of Hansel and Gretel. Eh, eh, eh. This is here. It's not there. Even if we feel it here. Eh? So the chiaroscuro, the mask, is produced at the level of the epiglot, which does this little movement and creates this more narrow space it's interesting to know well it will not change your life but it's <laughs> better to know it better to know it than not to know it i think this is the consciousness of a singer yeah. and if you know it you say okay so what now now that i know it does it change my life well if you know it maybe you can do something with it well you can start for example to take a sound and make <laughs> a bit really ugly the most ugly sound that you can do please <laughs> it's not a, a real sound it should be really uh, with this sort of metal almost disturbing like mm, my god and then you put the decoration of this lower larynx of this space of this oh and then you will get the right recipe the right amount of salt and the right amount of sugar in the recipe of opera. This is chiaroscuro. I'm American. How are you? I'm making this face, but I'm keeping the squillo. Mm. This is chiaroscuro. <laughs> I, well, that's, uh, that's a really good explanation, I find. Yeah, yeah. Great. Well, listen, Capuchin, I, 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 I actually... Capuchin, I, Capuchin, Capuchin I, I, is a flower. It's a yeah, flower. It's, but, and you are also French speaking. Right? Yeah, you know, but it, you know what's flower. funny? Capuchin. It's Set funny that uh, I, I, I said, oh, I have to be careful not to call her Capuchin before no, the, no. <laughs> because I, yeah, I say, you know, in Italian is it's the... In it's Italy, the, no yeah. one knows how to say my name. So everyone <laughs> tells me Capuchino. Since I'm a child, I'm used to. Oh my God! Um, uh, actually, I I would if if you have ten minutes, I would like just to acknowledge the chat there of the people that came uh, to see you and um and and then tell you some of the comments maybe and uh, maybe I'll take maybe the two best questions that I see there because I mean otherwise we're gonna be here till tomorrow and we can't unfortunately <laughs> do that. Capucine is really busy and uh, I'm tired to, to be honest. <laughs> so um, I'll, 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 let, me, let me look at the chat and see um, yeah. even the comments, you know, some people just have some comments that they would like to share and to acknowledge them to, for coming today. Um, Thank you. So uh, let me go there. Uh -huh. So we have Charles Broquero who came and see um, the chat. He, he said for him it's really difficult to do the U sound correctly. He's uh, he's kind of a high type of baritone. I don't know. Well, try try the, what she's saying. Try to think of a an Italian, a real Italian deep type of U, I guess. Athena says uh, grazie cappuccine. Vivian Janson de Lorme also. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, the people who heard you sang in the in the in the, the Tosca, the, a lot of bravas there. Bravo, bravissimo, beautiful voice. Um, okay, so 
Uh, yeah, Jakota. I, I don't know if you know Hak Jakota, Dan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, he was there. yesterday, I think, in the workshop. Yeah, so she is also uh, saying uh, very beautiful about, about your Tosca. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else or Vivian just saw uh, saying uh, about Tosca, do you have brown eyes? Because <laughs> you know the thing yes, about I the do, eyes. I do, I do, I do have them. <laughs> I'm the right Tosca. <laughs> and uh, yes, uh, oh, yes, Luthien Postuma, uh, hi from oh, Holland, she's saying, uh, or I don't know if that's a, I guess that's a woman, Luthien. She's saying hi from Holland and uh, asking some, I, I guess. She would like to uh, have a, a kind of recommendation for you ab about what schedule. Uh, I, I'm guessing she's saying practice schedule, like a young singer should be following. I don't know if you want to uh, answer that. Well, uh, of course, um, this depends a lot uh, from our stamina and our condition, our age and our health and experience. So there is not only one answer for young uh, persons. We should go slowly. Depending on which age, I have some students, even 12, 14, 16, you cannot treat them like a woman of 30. Mm. And you cannot treat a, a beginner like a professional. So you, 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 you have to be very delicate and careful if someone is really at the start, maybe, maybe half an hour, why not? 40 minutes, why not? Depending, yeah? And uh, when you feel that the stamina, the, the, the condition, it's like, I mean, jogging. <laughs> yeah, cannot, exactly. Yeah. You can not go out there and, and go uh, for a marathon in one day. <laughs> so you that's start a, with <laughs> running around yeah. your house or that's in the typical, garden. Probably. Typical mistake. And then you cannot run for uh, one month. <laughs> no, no, not. And also very important, like in every uh, niche sport, this is very important. We have to understand this. huh? Uh, the body and the voice needs uh, to recover. Very important. Huh? Mm. Let the cells, the body recover. Uh, don't overwork. It's better to work huh? uh, often, little than, okay, now today I have the weekend free and I go for it. The hours you, you destroy your voice. Yeah. We are not Did an instrument. Uh, uh a little question about that actually uh, it's more of an opinion question like i've seen the schedules of some stars like uh, jonas kaufman uh, etc and i i really i really don't don't think it's a, a healthy schedule like i don't understand how they can be singing one day in, in germany and then next day at metropolitan or, or like two days after a metropolitan opera do you think uh, the, the business of opera is not conscious enough of of uh, singers' voices and what can they do to 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 kind of give the the necessary rest to their voice? You're right. It is as you say. You rem you know that at the time of Carlos, <clears throat> yeah, they took, for example, the boat, <laughs> the ship, not the boat, yeah. the ship. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah, really yeah. had to uh, cross the ocean, and it took it took three four uh, weeks, and there were other company and the conductor, so. Very often, Carlos studied the roles with the conductor even on the, on the ship, and it was like oh, landing. Now it's very stressful and very competitive. Yeah, it's really brought to the limits, to the human limits. Mm -hmm. uh, so at the end, it's very very tough, especially here. Eh? You you resist only if here you have iron nerves because it is. I, I I'm quite. Um, mm. Uh, of the idea that it is a bit a bit much. I don't know what there is. Uh, it's possible to do. Probably, <laughs> these stars at the high league should say, no, this is too much. We mm. put limits. But if they don't do it because um, maybe they have too much pressure, I don't know. Uh, then uh, imagine if younger singers can do it. It's impossible. But of course, we saw. I don't want to make names. It's not very kind. But also recently, I mean, oh, I, I named Jonas Kaufman because uh, I know he's really busy. Is yeah, but I yeah. Uh, also can tell you that as him, there are few who lost completely the voice yes. and had to go through two, three surgeries without making names. This is mm -hmm. the price to pay. And uh, some are stronger 
in the mind and even in the body, they are like uh, blessed with iron um, vocal folds and other mm-hmm. not. So you kind of have to know yourself to your limits. Yes, uh, I believe, yes, uh, you have to protect yourself and uh, with the risk to say to, to lose some jobs, sometime uh, say no. Mm. Yeah, well, yeah. To give yourself the time, to give yourself the time to recover because uh, we cannot replace the voice. Yeah, I think, uh, well, uh, thanks, thanks so much for that advice because I think a lot of of young singers kind of uh, are into the dilemma that ah if I don't do it now then they're not going to call me back type of thing and then then uh, my career yes, is going to suffer. Yes, of course for singers uh, who are starting the pressure is uh, still uh, different because yeah they want to prove themselves. Yeah. So it's uh, understandable, yes. Mm. But uh, yeah, you have to find the right balance. There is not one answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great, Capucin. Uh, well, uh, very generous of you. Thanks a lot for uh, for uh, tuning by. And uh, I don't know if you have uh, some last words that you would like yes. to to say. Yes. Yeah. All right, great. Yes. yes, I want to say one thing which is for me very important, and it is that we spoke about technique uh, since uh, almost one and a half hour. <laughs> But uh, the main point about all this is to motion people, in my opinion. Mm. And to do this, we need to also put a lot of attention, I think, because we did not mention it, and it's really, really important, on the text. Eh? How we pronounce things, how we stress, what we say, in which way we say it, eh? where we do the accents, do we pronounce uh, well uh, the consonants, We have to learn to length some vowels here and there. We have to respect, for example, the rhythm of the spoken language when we sing in Italian. Or we have to respect uh, the rhythm of the spoken language uh, of the French language if we sing in a French opera. So take the time to do this because um, we are really, we have a responsibility, which is not just singing well and showing how good we are we have to bring people again in the theaters and not to the cinema yeah now even more with this uh, yes now the responsibility grew uh, even more so um it's very important to reach people and to be good communicators and not only thinking about perfection no 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 we need to reach them in an emotional way being of course in the role in the part but really reaching people is possible through the text they they don't see what we think the, our emotion uh, can um how can i say materialize uh, yeah of course with the colors that we use like a painter in the voice but also uh, how we pronounce and say things because we are not flutes we are not instruments we are not uh, a clarinet. So this is a very, very, very big responsibility. It's not enough to think about nice voices. We should sing, uh, think to be like Shakespearean actors who sing. Yeah. It's very important. Mm. And I can tell you, in Italy, uh, when Giuseppe Di Stefano was already oh, an old man, yes. uh, the voice was not the one of his best ears. Uh, but so the voice was a bit, well, as it is in an old man. Well, he had a way of saying things that reached the public. And the public just Went crazy. They felt uh, from the chair. They loved him. <laughs> so it's not about perfection. It's about reaching people. Mm. Huh? It's very important, this. Yeah, I love that you mentioned that because if it's if there's a singer to mention in that in that way of touching, even even when he didn't have the perfect technique at that point, It's, it's really him. I can think of him. Yeah, it's a great example. I don't know if, if particularly, I, I don't know if for the people that is there watching, if they can, if you can find uh, a recording of uh, Lucia di la Memor with, with the Stefano. I mean, anything really is great, but I think uh, in Lucia, you can really see, um, I think, a little bit of what Capucin is trying to tell us. And also, you know, he did that. Um, 
that tour with the farewell tour with Maria Callas, that was uh, extremely touching also, I find. Uh, and also Maria Callas, uh, we speak about her still now, you know, I was thinking uh, some days ago that she does not even have a grave, you know this, because her ashes were distributed in, uh, in the agency and we still speak about her and we will always speak about her. Why? Because she left us such a big emotion that we can't erase that. And it was not only about perfection. Of course, she was a perfectionist, <laughs> clear. She studied and was very serious and very professional, but she was not always perfect. She had not always perfect sounds, but she was very emotional. And what she did, she did it with a text. Listen well how she pronounces things, where she stretches inside of a sentence, what and why. It's a big school. And this is uh, the text. Very important uh, element. W one l a little question before um, about this exactly. What do you think about sacrificing a little bit of the technique to bring the emotion? Is that something that you think an artist should, should allow themselves to go? Uh, there are two answers. The first answer is yes, but the second answer is it's not necessary. And you know why? Because the good news of the day is that if you articulate better and pronounce better, you will feel better your body. You will connect better to your breath support system and you will sing better. So it's a misconception to think, well, I make uh, it very supple so that it will sound like an angel. No, you will not sound like an angel. You will sound like a person who does not sustain your sound. Because becoming too supple with addiction, you will lose the perception of your body. We said this before. I, 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 I did. And this is how we sing. For example, it's. Keep younger. It's not. Out of the blue from paradise. This is an unsustained sound. Maybe the first row will hear you. Wonderful. Yeah. Maybe if you yeah. have a microphone, then it's okay. But otherwise, you have a big problem. Why? Because you're not pronouncing sufficiently your text and your especially, listen well, especially your consonants. Mm. <laughs> This is sustained. Maybe when we are very near, maybe here I was actually a bit too far, too near to the computer. It seemed a bit aggressive, but I can assure you that this, this works in a big hall, in a concert hall, in a theater. If you don't sustain it, and this means if you don't connect the diction, the pronunciation to your body, you will have zero projection and you will have lots of problem. Mm -hmm. You will start to scream probably. Yeah. Pray God, help me. <laughs> Send me a microphone. Yeah. Which will never arrive. So it's not really necessary to think, oh, for the diction I have to. No, no. The two things go together. All we right. say in Italy there are many ways to go to Rome. So you can go to a, a good performance through a good uh, technique, but also through the text. The two things come together. Actually, it's the same. They have to go together. The same. Pizza. The same pizza. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> great. Uh, well, listen, uh, this was uh, Capucine Chiaudani. Finally, I, I said it correctly. <laughs> and uh, I'm Don Adriano. And thanks so much to, Ca to Capucine today for um, this wonderful interview. Check her website out, uh, uh, capucinechiodani.com. And uh, she's very active on Facebook, social media, YouTube. You can find that out. It's Bel Canto for You. Bel Canto uh, for You is my private uh, group that I recently created. So everyone is welcome. It's very easy. Bel Canto for the number four, for you. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> you are very well, welcome. You are all musicians and singers and we exchange thoughts about Great. music and singing. And, 
and uh, well, she teaches also. So, I, I, do you actually uh, question about your teaching? Do you teach uh, from far away? Like, do you have students from, uh, like, uh, for example, Athena? You teach her by Zoom or Skype? You do this kind of I thing? I teach. I teach every day, every day to students, singers, uh, professionals, also. Uh, uh, and beginners, any level, uh, from each corner of the planet. Okay, so uh, if anybody's interested, then it yes, resounded Zoom with them. Yes, Zoom is wonderful messenger also, especially now with the COVID, this uh, digital way of teaching, uh, ex um, especially now, uh, increased. And so uh, next week I will be, as I said, may I repeat it, in Germany, in presence, for a course in presence, so yes, we've made it. <laughs> the first, the first one after the COVID. I after the guessing. COVID, yes. Oh uh, wow, yes. okay. It's uh, in Bayern. This is in the south of Germany, uh, in the Operna Academy um, Schloss Henfenfeld. So very happy about this. But uh, well, with this uh, COVID uh, time, uh, many many persons were looking for a guide, for guidance, for help. And I'm, I was uh, very happy to help and to guide. And so uh, my, my students increased uh, from USA uh, to Canada to Australia. Yeah, sometimes I teach in the night because there are seven, eight, nine hours difference. But I'm very happy and glad to do this. Yes. So. Yeah, and you still do you, do you do you still have some spots left for if if new people want to come in? Is well, that, <laughs> how does that work? They contact well, you? It's, it's quite full. Let's try. <laughs> I will do my best to squeeze you in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. It's the price of the success. Yes. All right. Well, great. Excellent for you. Excellent news for you. And uh, but, again, well, what I also do, what I also yes. do, which might help if um, you keep. Uh, uh, yourself informed uh, if you look either on my fan page uh, Belcanto for you vocal coaching on Facebook or if you join my my private uh, group where you are really warmly uh, welcome I will also post ag again and again my next webinars online so uh, this is also a way to know what I'm doing where and yeah and mm -hmm. also uh, about the replay I will then uh, uh, send uh, a link where they are available to be seen again and so certainly Excellent. I will organize after this course in Germany other workshops certainly and uh, I have some nice surprises but I don't want to say it because it's a very very nice idea and so keep uh... <laughs> okay well just keep me posted I, I'll try yes. to share it I'll share it in the La Cena Musicale website yeah, when I'm ready I will tell you the nice surprise I'm thinking about it all right, great, great. All right, so thanks a lot. And uh, I'm Don Adriano. Um, and uh, thanks so for everybody uh, watching all around the world. I think we had people from everywhere, basically, today. Oh. And um, nice. and uh, yes, check out our website. We have um, actually, uh, Capucin, if you have five minutes at one point, uh, it would be great if you could uh, check our website, myshena.org. And we're doing a survey there to... Uh, to determine whether the people are ready to go see live shows and and how would they feel comfortable about it what we're trying to do there is to uh, create a, a after an uh like a, a kind of publication where 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 we try to uh, guide the cultural um, um the cultural companies to 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 tell them look this is what people feel like uh, they they're they are safe uh, with and, and this is are the dates where they feel comfortable going back to shows and all that kind of thing so you know if you have uh, three minutes uh, it really takes to, to, to fill it up uh, you're welcome to go there and anybody that's watching it's uh, very easy to fill out it's www.myshena.org you can also check our podcast um, it's the same as we're doing here but it's not live and I sometimes reduce it or add a little bit uh, of music, a little bit of rhythm. I like it a lot, I must say. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's this uh, available on Spotify and on iTunes. Also, you know, feel free to leave a donation if you love this program, you wanted to encourage uh, journalism of arts. It's a really difficult career too, I have to say. 
uh, particularly now, we're depending on artists doing shows because we do publicity for them and it's be been really difficult. So any help would be appreciated. Thanks a lot again to Capucin Kiao Dani. Um, and, yes. uh, Thank you. Uh, and have a great day, everybody. See you. Uh, Thank you to everyone. Uh, yes. See you around uh, the other Wednesday, not this Wednesday, the other Wednesday. We're going to be having an interview here. Um, and uh, yes, thanks a lot. And 